Time now for our weekly roundtable. Joining me this week, Republican strategist Randy Peppel, Democratic strategist Kathy Allen, Cairo 7 radio host Dave Ross, and Seattle Times columnist Joni Balter. Well, before we talk about Gary Locke heading off to Washington to be a part of the Obama administration, let's talk about the uh, budget that the Obama administration put out there this week. $3.6 trillion federal deficit. My Stinker God. Shot. That is really something. Reaction. Randy. That's the change that I guess people were looking for. Is a Democrat that was going to overspend the budget tremendously. The, the, the size of the deficit is what's truly staggering. I mean, after all the attacks on the Bush administration for what they rang up over the last eight years, this exceeds that accumulative total. So deficits do matter now, right? It didn't matter, matter last year. They didn't Remember last year? It was, it was like, Blame game. Now it's like well, now it's our time. All right, Congress now it's last our time. Year as well, as I it's recall. our time to be talking about the fact that we're trying to do something about the miserable economy that your president left us with, and now all of a sudden we try to do something about it, and you're into the, and the Democratic blame Congress game. had nothing to do with it. The, the, the Democrat Congress last year that passed? Okay. okay. No, this doesn't here, sound postpartisan to me. <laughs> <laughs> the best part of it is that it's honest about the Iraq war. That should be Thank accounted you. for. Do you disagree? Thank you. No, but the, the Iraq war being accounted for doesn't justify going out with the extent of the, the deficit that the president is projecting. We, and, and what's really unfortunate is that it's being projected, uh, uh, prepared as you're either for this or you're for nothing, and that's not the case. That's but you could true. you could get to a that's you could get true. to a middle ground. That, they're not uh, talking no about this. I that think that Congress. right now that the president is talking about trying to manage something that could be multipartisan, bipartisan, whatever. And you know you guys are being stick in the mud. Yeah. Just plain helpful. People want something done. The polls certainly. Yeah, okay, well let's let's nothing. move on and talk about uh, Iraq for one brief moment here because there is some. Uh, agreement here. Uh, President Obama announced today that U.S. combat in Iraq would end by August 31st, 2010, and even John McCain says that's yeah. a good idea. And John McCain was talking about that during the campaign. The interesting use is the, the, the use of the word combat forces. Forces are going to stay in Iraq, yeah. uh, but he's got to try to find a way, the president has to try to find a way to talk about fulfilling a campaign promise that he's not. But the reason he's not is because that's the prudent thing to do. But, but this is one that, campaign promise that you're happy he doesn't Absolutely. He doesn't it, fall, it, right? it was a bad campaign promise to make because it depends on what conditions are on the ground, yeah. not what conditions are in the but campaign. But you see, he didn't turn out to be so crazy after all. Yeah. yeah. Never suggested yeah. he was. Okay. All right. Moving on. Let's talk about Gary Locke uh, becoming a part of the Obama administration this week. Johnny Balter, you wrote, uh, Obama cabinet strengthened by Northwest talent. Uh, you also note that uh, they were overlooked, at least uh, the talent here in the Northwest, well, until just recently, and then it's just like, we're the hotbed. We're the, we're the hot ones now. For, at the very beginning there, it was like, uh, hello, do we have any people up here that could serve in this cabinet? And then all of a sudden it, it came sort of at the a little bit lower level, deputy director of HUD for Ron Sims, and then the police chief for drug czar, and this is a big one, Gary Locke, Commerce Secretary. Yeah. It rings a lot of bells. I, I thought it was a, I thought it was a great pick. I really it did. is. I could have missed the guy. We can't push him around on the gang of four here on here. <laughs> no, but it's like he misses he, us too. Don't worry. I got to tell you, the, this is a great mess, message for America. The fact is, this guy knows not only the Asian culture. He has definitely played in terms of the Asian markets. He will be, if nothing else, something to help bring home the bacon to to Washington. Randy, State. does it help the Northwest? Well. Well, I mean, he's technically supposed to be the Commerce Secretary for the entire United States, but I'm sure that he'll uh, keep a warm, uh, uh, a warm thought for us here. If it helps the Northwest, it's going to be in having an advocate for trade in that administration, because there are a lot of folks in the Obama administration, and at times the President himself, who have not been advocates for free trade. And Gary Locke has been, and, and we'll need that voice uh, in D.C. I predict the best thing that can happen for free trade in the world is a deep bore tunnel. <laughs> under the city of Seattle. That's my prediction. Well, hopefully we get it first through Seattle. <laughs> All right. Well, what, we have uh, had news this week about King County Assessor Scott Noble. Uh, was uh, reported that he uh, was driving while intoxicated. Uh, his blood alcohol test came in at 0.22%, nearly triple the legal limit. He did a U-turn in the middle of the road and apparently hit another car, uh, ended up in the hospital. Should he resign? Oh, yeah. The bad news is that for any of those of us who know Scott Noble, this guy's been 
somebody who hasn't been drinking for over 10 years. You'd see him at parties and this guy was strictly drinking water. The bottom line is, is that whatever happened, uh, we're in a stage right now where the public expects and demands that their public officials can't have, can't make mistakes like this. Your he's paper been a, says he's he been a terrific down. public servant. He is the ultimate you know, numbers nerd. He's done a great job, but this is this is just too big. Yeah. You, you can't you can't go southbound, northbound. Your well, perspective. You ran for office. Yeah. Well, why are you linking me with this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just said you ran for office. Okay. Um, I I don't think that he should be treated any differently than what would happen to somebody in a in private business. He has to face. If he decides to stay on, he has to face the voters. Uh, but the fact is that um, people get in trouble and still keep their jobs. If um, if this is uh, he should be treated the way anybody else is. If he's sent to jail and can't do his job, then obviously he uh, he loses it. But you know, uh, give the guy the benefit of due process, like anybody else would get. I don't say cut him any slack, but uh, also um, don't discard him just because he's a public servant. All right, let's uh, talk about Olympia. The uh, you know more news about the budgets and concerns there, and again more talk about taxes. Uh, Senate Majority Leader Lisa Brown says that the legislature can't rely on spending cuts alone. Uh, that higher taxes should be part of the legislature's solution to the state's eight billion dollar deficit. Uh, what do you think? I, I say there have been conservatives for years saying that Washington's government could be cut by 30 percent and nobody would notice. I think um, this is the time to try that. I say try it, let's see. Uh, it would completely um, stun the Republicans for the Democrats just to go ahead and say we're only going to spend what we've got. And um, if, it, if it works, I say great. But um, maybe this will be the thing that gets the taxpayers spontaneous to, spontaneously to say maybe we've gone too far. What do you think? I think tax cuts are going to hurt the economy. I think that th that they're just uh, not going to work. Tax, tax cuts. Tax, tax increases. Excuse tax me. Increases. Tax is increases. I think that's just a really bad idea. It's going to hurt the economy. We're trying to rebound. It won't work. So it's well, a cut, cut, cut. I got to tell you, when it comes down to it, if they're going to make the tax on people like me and Randy and political consultants and probably reporters too, if we're going to do that, and if it's going to be lawyers, trial lawyers, and consultants. Uh, so that more kids get more education dollars. Oh yeah, I think that the people will vote for that, unfortunately or fortunately. Well, well you get the final this word, week, uh, you know, <laughs> the, the Senate Republicans came out with their own plan for uh, Yes We Can, which is balance the budget without raising taxes. And I think, uh, as Dave said, you've got to try that first. And then if you want to go to the people for tax increases, which is what Lisa Brown is talking about, go ahead and do so. But uh, What's really disingenuous is the Democrats saying, oh, we're not talking about taxes right now. They're telling the reporters down there, oh, there's no backroom discussions going on about taxes. When all of their outside interest groups, from labor to the environmental organizations to uh, the, uh, the various um, uh, Internet groups, are doing focus groups right now about how do you package a tax increase so that it'll pass. And, and we, we don't assume that the uh, Republicans, the BIAW or realtors or any of the people that are against them Got to jump in because we those. ran out of time, but I knew you'd get that prop in. I just <laughs> knew that. All right. Pepple, Allen, Joni Balter, Dave Ross, thank you very much.